Hello everyone. I'm here to talk about one agile transformation and two beers. So um, has agile transformation just become a meaningless buzzword, right? So a lot of these transformations that uh, we see are really uh, getting further and further away from people and you know, companies, organizations are just copying what others are doing. And maybe also just because uh, people are not being empowered to share what they really think about the transformations and some of the things are just uh, top down. Um, actually, this is something, uh, maybe it's not so good like in reading, I found this last night and uh, five ways to screw up an agile transformation. First, call it agile transformation. That is a nice one. Write an ag uh, agile law book, call it agile playbook. Create a department of agile enforcement, call it an agile center of excellence. Run an agile conversion scheme, call it agile training and coaching. And keep spouting the latest, uh, latest agile buzzwords, call it uh, OKRs. So, I was looking at LinkedIn uh, last night. I found this actually interesting, so why not put it here? Because I think it resonated with me. And the reason it resonated, and I think this uh, makes some sense, is because uh, McKinsey and company has a study that shows that 70% of all transformations actually fail. Um, and no, if it shows that 70% of all transformations would fail, why we continue to do that? Why companies want to embark in this transformation train and, and, and do this, right? Uh, I would like to ask you some participation if you have the mobile phones. Scan the QR code or go to slido.com and use the number. So put your phones up and share your thoughts about why do you think, you know, transformations in general would fail. Uh, and hopefully if you are able to go there and things will ch change there. So, and I think you can input more than, than one. So go and uh, we'll see things changing. And these are uh, not a comprehensive or total list of uh, the study from a KC showed, right? So uh, this probably, there are more, but uh, I wanted to go with uh, this. So, okay, so things are changing. And lack of shared vision is winning. Then lack of alignment, lack of engagement, lack of aspiration. So when we think about why this can fail, right? So lack of aspiration, just maybe the company doesn't even know where it's going, right? So if you don't know, why would you embark in a transformation to a place where you don't know where you're going? Uh, lack of a shared vision, which seems to be winning, but still votes coming in, uh, is maybe the company knows where the company is going, but not everyone in the company has that same understanding of the vision, uh, where it's going. Uh, lack of alignment, maybe the company uh, is not aligned where it wants to go, and then if you do a transformation, probably you will fail. And lack of engagement, the company knows where it's going, but the people don't believe in it and they are not engaged. So most likely the company uh, will fail and still have some votes. So great, lack of share vision uh, won here. So the lack of, lack of share vision would be, the, the company has a vision, right? But not everyone understand the vision of going forward. So if you go on a transformation, agile transformation, digital transformation, the chances are that you're, you're gonna fail in the long run. And the lack of alignment is just, no, you, you might have a vision and people don't really uh, agree with that, disagree, so it could be something in, in between those lines, right? Um, so for myself, I don't like the word transformation just to start with, right? So. 
that's my personal view. Agile transformation, to me, I always think of, I don't know, transformers, right? So someone <laughs> coming, yeah, we're in, it's going to transform. Uh, so I don't like personally, right? So the, the word transformation and agile transformation. Um, w when we look at what transformation can mean, a transformation is a dramatic change in form or appearance. An important event, like you know, if you're getting married, uh, getting a driver's license, that can cause a transformation in your life. A transformation is a, an extreme radical change. So when we are talking about transformation, to me, I have this view of uh, you know, before and after situation. Right? So before you're bad, and then after, oh, you are great because you were transformed, the company was transformed. And I, and I don't see it that way, right? So a lot of uh, things that happen is like you are talking about implement these, go with that framework, right? Uh, maybe you heard of the, the Spotify model, right? So, oh, we should use the Spotify model. Let's put the Spotify belt on and we're going to be agile in three months. And that's really not how it's supposed to work, right? Um, I am a drummer. Anyone here play drums? Anyone? We have one drummer, two, three drummers. So you are excluded from this. Um, anyone else playing other instruments other than drums? Okay, so you have some musicians here. So I'm a drummer. And maybe I will transform you in the best drummer in the world. Right? So, so a, a negative, right? So if I would say to you other people here that would, I would say, I will transform you in the best drummer in the world. Probably people would think, eh, maybe not, right? Maybe I don't like drums that much. Maybe it's going to be difficult, right? Uh, some people here even might not like music. I don't know. So to come in here and say, I'm going to transform you in the best drummer in the world, it's not going to make sense my transformation will definitely fail, right? So I, have to, I need to have other ways to, to make sure whatever I want to, to go after, I, I'm able to do. Uh, and I always think of this as a journey, right? So when we talk about Agile, Agile is not the, the destination, right? So Agile is a pathway forward that we use. We can call it Agile journey, we can call it continuous improvement journey, we can call it whatever, right? But the problem is that a lot of times Agile is set as the destination, but that's not where we should be focusing on, right? So it's really the, uh, the way that we go uh, forward. These are some of the reasons, and this comes from the 15th state of Agile report. The, these some are some of the reasons that uh, companies initiate Agile transformation. And um, I think they are all valid reasons. The problem with this is when executive leadership, CEO, CTOs, they decide what needs to, to happen and it becomes top down. So in my previous company, uh, that was actually the scenario, right? So I remember one day receiving an email from CEO or someone really high on the leadership we are embarking on an agile transformation. Um, no, there were reasons why we should embark on the agile transformation. And the bottom line was, now you, employee, you have to do all these agile courses and you have to finish by this date and you will, we will be tracking you, right? So yeah, and I remember we, you know, we had the pressure to do all these online courses and uh, no, after finishing, uh, yeah, the agile transformation was done. Of course, that uh, I mean, uh, I think I left uh, before they finalized, but I heard it was not that, su that successful, right? So, if it's top down, you are not engaged, you will do, and then the the, the company or the higher leadership will ask, "Oh, why did we fail? We don't know, right?" So these are some of the the reasons that I think are reasonable to start a, a journey, but not from top down, right? So everyone needs to be really involved. 
And I found this uh, very nice article talking about you know, the 10 main challenges of uh, you know, this transformation. So I'm not going to go through all of them, but I'm going to focus on the, the, four, uh, the four on the top there. And just because I see that these uh, some connections to what we actually have been trying to do at Red Hat. All right, so the first one that is a, a challenge is the lack of Agile understanding. If we look at the Agile Manifesto, Agile Manifesto deals with software development. It doesn't necessarily deal with business outcomes. And a lot of times, the transformation is really focused on engineering, you know, product delivery. We need to provide products faster to the market. That's all good, but if we just solely focus on that, we are increasing our chances that any effort in transformation will fail. Because maybe we are forgetting that it's not only the engineering side. You know, we have sales, we have marketing, we have a whole lot of more people that should be involved. And focusing on only one uh, specific part you know, might cause it to fail. Another part of lack of understanding is when the higher leadership just says, yeah, we're going to go agile, and, uh, but they don't understand what really that means. Right, they, because maybe they saw it elsewhere, and then you will see buzzwords coming back and forth, and you know, and, oh, no, this framework, and you know, uh, oh, the velocity, oh, the sprints, all that. And um, that just shows a lack of understanding. And that's a lot on agile coaches to actually coach and mentor leadership on actually the correct understanding of what Agile really means. If that doesn't happen, then you know, the so-called transformation it could, could be set to, be to fail uh, in the long run. Uh, another challenge is related to the organizational culture, right? So the, the mindset of the organization, uh, you know, the, the perspective, the vision, everything is in there. Depending on the culture, going this Agile can be very, very difficult, a radical change, and people will push back, right? And going in this agile road, we will definitely break the, th that silos mentality, right? So, yeah, my team does this, we are great at this, I don't need to talk to anyone else because we are great at this, and, or don't talk to me, and we need to actually expand when we are going Agile, right? So we are trying to make sure everyone improves. And by breaking that silos, it's a one, uh, one step further to actually being successful. And, we, and when we don't think about how the organization is, how the culture is, uh, it's something that could definitely uh, make you know, uh, the journey or the transformation fail. Another point or challenge that I want to highlight is just copying other Agile transformation projects. Uh, and that's a good one because how usually uh, Agile transformation project starts. So the company, the CEO, or whoever, a higher edition, oh, we need to go and start this Agile transformation project because we need to go Agile. And then what they do? They go to the market and they hire Agile consultants, right? So they go and the Agile consultants come in and they prepare the Agile roadmap. Most likely using a Gantt chart, very project management, like with the deliverables and the milestones and all that. And just this is already a sign that, whoa, that's not going to the right direction. But this is how usually it starts, right? So the there is a consultant coming in and the consultant knows everything, the consultant We'll share the roadmap, we'll share the best practices that the teams have to follow, and there will be you know, specific frameworks, specific training, uh, that only that consultant is certified to deliver. So, um, and the, the, the thing is, just copying what others are doing, just copying whatever is the model like Spotify, right? for example, it just simply doesn't work. Right? 
companies will have different requirements, different priorities, different ways of working. And if we don't acknowledge that, if we don't understand that, we are really going to, uh, to fail in, in the long run. And the last one I want to share is restricting Agile to pilots. Not actual pilots, but in this case, pilots, um, you know, we are starting an Agile transformation. But first, let's focus on a few teams, or just in this area. Let's do everything in this area, and let's get the results, right? So, because the, the the leadership wants to see results. Leadership wants to see metrics just for the pilot teams and see if it, 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 it works. No, Agile is really about thinking. Agile is really about trying experiments, right? Tr trying, uh, improving uh, quickly and hopefully easily, easily. So restricting this just to a few teams would be uh, not a no so good way to go. What it could be differently here? Maybe all teams are shared and understand the principles behind what we are doing, and they go and take their road with uh, with this, and then we gather and you know constantly we see how they are doing. So the idea of just restricting Agile to pilots and we do that for six months and we gather results for six months and then we start to think about how we're going to do elsewhere, uh, it wouldn't be uh, you know, a, a good way. Uh, I think I if we start looking at it from you know, a, a, a kind of a innovation adoption curve, right? So understanding who are the innovators, early adopters of this, it would, it would be nice because then they would come and then they would help put this effort forward of, uh, of the Agile journey, continuous improvement journey. And then the, if it's successful from them, the rest will follow, right? So the, the early adopters, the late uh, uh, adopters. So this is uh, really kind of a, a way of working with the innovation curve. And at Red Hat, last year, we started this effort of going in the continuous improvement journey. Uh, and a few people get, got together, right? So executives, senior managers, and uh, a few subject matter experts to kind of discuss the idea, how would this journey look like at Red Hat? And uh, we use the open decision framework for that. Uh, and the reason for that is that, well, it wouldn't be something top down for sure, right? That definitely would not work at Red Hat. Um, so we use the open decision framework. And um, what happened is after uh, some time, right? So the managers, uh, the executives, subject matter experts, they came up with a vision for the uh, for this journey. They came up with roles, responsibilities, training, and all that. Everything documented. But the point that was really great about it is that uh, no, it was an engagement. So everyone was engaged since the beginning, right? So everyone knew what's going to happen. Ev everyone uh, was really. Uh, uh, empowered to provide feedback, right? And we received actually a lot of feedback. Uh, I'm gonna make some, s some assumptions here that what I remember is something like 600, so all in the do document, 600 comments from 600 uh, specific people commenting back, you know, uh, oh, this doesn't make sense, maybe you should think about this, right? So from everyone in the company. Uh, and what happens is that we receive that feedback and we are able to adjust that journey based on that feedback, feedback from people, right? And this is something that in my previous company, as I mentioned before, I, I didn't see. It was like, you're embarking on an agile transformation journey, watch the videos, right? So in this case, it's very dif different. 
we are embarking on a transformation journey together. This is what we came up with initially. Now, what are your thoughts? And we received a lot of feedback. Doesn't mean that every feedback we're gonna do something, but a lot of the feedbacks, like we incorporated and we changed the way we wanted to move forward. So to me, that was really good, right? And in the end, we get the buy-in from people. No, not everyone, for sure, right? So there still, I'm sure there, there are still people that don't like what is happening, but we definitely increased our, ch our chances of people buying into the idea and thinking more positively of our way forward. So this is, uh, I think to me, this was really, really good. Um, so this is just something that you know, we have been doing at Red Hat. Uh, and you know, is it perfect? I would say no, it's not perfect. No, and if I wouldn't have a bigger no, I would put it here. Oh, I have a bigger no. <laughs> so no, no, it's not perfect. There are a lot of things that could have been done differently that uh, you know, can be improved. But you know, we are in, in, in the beginning of, of the journey and um, we will see how things will turn up. Um, at least from, from my perspective, having people engaged in the conversations and them providing feedback, I think it's already a win. Maybe next year I'll be here talking about the success or failure of what we are trying to accomplish with the teams. Uh, so the takeaways from everything that I uh, wanted to share here and with regards to agile transformation or improvement journey, whatever you want to call it, like moving one step uh, ahead on, on just improving. When we talk about you know, these this changes, right? So engagement is really key. We want to people to be engaged and participate in, in what we are trying to, uh, to go forward, what we are deciding. So that's why feedback is really gold, right? So we want feedback from people it doesn't mean that we are going to incorporate all the feedbacks, but it means that, yeah, we are acknowledging everyone. With that, we have the buy-in, right? So the buy-in is really essential. Not 100% of the people will uh, agree with everything, but at least if they know that they are heard, you know, that they, they see that, okay, th they heard me, they are not going with my idea, but they are, you know, they are listening to me, they, they, uh, they pay attention. So this is really good. And if you have a framework to engage people, right? So with the transparency, like open decision framework, that really helps give the, 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 the people and the teams abil ability to just see how things are going. That's what we are trying to do. Uh, as I said, we started last year and we, you know, uh, we are, we're, I think we're heading in the correct direction, uh, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and that's it. And if you want to talk more about Agile transformation or if you have ideas like, uh, is Agile dead or not? Uh, you hate Agile, you love Agile. Uh, come tomorrow, I have a meetup uh, that I want to uh, hear from people, you know, is Agile dead? Is it not? You love Agile, you hate Agile, come. Uh, we're not gonna fight, uh, hopefully, but you know, we're gonna have some, some nice conversation uh, around it, so it's gonna be tomorrow at uh, 12.30. Uh, and of course, uh, you have my LinkedIn if you want. And that's pretty much it for this talk. Any, I don't know, questions, comments? Please go ahead. So, uh, you mentioned you have two different streams of agile transformation. One was in the physical point. Yes. And one is in the in the red hat, right? Yeah, in red hat, yes. So, at some point where uh, from agile to cloud, we start getting the search companies we are working for. Probably it was just like you know, you take it, you watch it, and then you are ready for it, right? But in red hat, you are providing feedback in order maybe to. Uh, Realign, let's say that Martin, the responsibility from your side, okay, is 
defining that they haven't defined the culture of where you're coming from, okay? And this is somehow the alliance in the Germanic, in the translation to somewhere with the Slavic indigenous company. So you were provided some feedback. Did you see any outcome from this feedback in the way that you say, yeah, actually it happened? Mm -hmm. So the question is if we saw, yeah, so the, the question to summarize, if we saw from, from the feedback that we received, uh, what changed? That's kind of a, exactly. yeah. Okay, so uh, go into more detail how we did it at Red Hat. Uh, uh, so there was this small team of managers. We actually created, uh, four specific areas for this so-called transformation or journey, right? So we had specific, we had a specific vision document, what we wanted to achieve, and actually we had values for, for, for that part, right? So what were the values for us to go in this journey? We had roles and responsibilities document highlighting uh, all the roles you know, that would be important in the journey. We had another part of training. So this was the initial idea. Uh, and, and the part of the feedback is actually directly on this, right? So there were people saying, uh, and in my case, I was more working on the training and enablement part. They were saying, this training that you're highlighting here wouldn't make much sense because of this. Maybe we should consider this training instead. Or, you know, I have an idea that maybe we could do a training like this that would help you know, in this or that scenario. Uh, and I these were actually you know, Google document comments. People were incorporating. And what we were doing is that we were reviewing everything. And once we would review and we would say, well, that actually really makes sense. Right? So, uh, and because you know, we were so into it that when someone came and s shared something with us, we said, oh, this really makes sense. So that's wha where we were talking to people that providing feedback and kind of getting together. So maybe help us align this in the document. And then what happened is that we ended up with, uh, I don't know even how many versions of the document until we would say that's the, the final one and share like brother. Does it help answering the question? So in our case, so how long does it take? And whether, let's say, this would have applied to everybody, any stakeholder, because it normally doesn't. No, no, it doesn't. And uh, so how long did it take, and it, it, did it satisfy everybody? No, it didn't satisfy everybody. Not everybody in the organization actually put the time to provide feedback, all right? So that's one thing. Uh, but hopefully people knew, because everyone in the company received uh, an email saying, please provide feedback. Uh, and I, I don't remember if it was a month or something like that, where we let it open for people to, to provide feedback. We were re reading in the meantime, adjusting what is needed. So that's where you know, e every uh, feedback that we wanted incorporated would change and we would make a new version of the document. And after we received all the feedback and we decided, yeah, these are the good feedback that we're going to incorporate. Then we had, all right, so this is the final document from inputs of everyone. This is the final thing that we are going. And of course, when we did this, the people that were not paying attention before, they came up with other, ah, but I have a feedback now. And I remember that we managed a couple of feedback after as well, um, just to make sure everything it was fine. So we had that, uh, that document. That's where everything related to our journey is, right? So if everyone at Red Hat, oh, where, is, where we are going as a global engineering in this journey? Well, look at the vision, right? So look at uh, how you are defining the roles and responsibilities. And one good thing that we are doing right now is um, kind of a baseline assessment with the teams based on the vision, based on the values that we put there, 
to understand where teams are. And it's one assessment and for all. So it would be give us a very good perspective where things think, uh, teams think that where they are and would provide us uh, ways to see where you know, might be possible areas for improvement at the organization level, right? So uh, this would be uh, uh, helpful for us. Does it help, Esri? All right, cool. Yeah, L mm, looks it. Yeah. Uh, So uh, the way I see it, uh, oh, so so with um, with my knowledge, how would I, if I would have a company, how would I embark on a agile transformation or uh, a journey? I would see it from from the perspective of uh, what I mentioned before, the innovation curve, right? So if I know who are the innovators or the early adopters in my company, I know that they will want to try or they are open to try something different, right? So it would be easier to, to try everything with them first. So trying you know, what we want to change uh, and getting ideas from these innovators, early adopters, uh, how they see this changing, that would be a good way forward and it's not like uh, we're not talking about you know implementing this it's like ideas from them and getting the, the ideas from them I would see is that they would experiment right so that's what Aju is about trying to experiment we would have some success from that some failures of course we would learn from it and uh, after this is uh, this is starting to kind of ramp up with these early adopters uh, we would go the, 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 then the early majority of the company would start to look at, oh, what is happening in, no, with the company? Why these teams are working so well? We need to kind of see it. And then it's kind of um, ramping, ramping up from there. And it's not like we are calling, yeah, the, the Agile transformation started. As I said, w it would be a journey. It it wouldn't have any sort of time frame, right? So as sometimes we see, oh, this agile transformation will take, or you need to complete it by nine months. You need to complete it by 12 months. That, that doesn't work, right? So uh, um, transformation work or this journey would never, to in my view, would never finish because, I mean, we can always, improve right so I would think about as the innovation curve focusing on the innovators early adopters work with them on experimenting new ways of working try to improve and you know the, the theory of this innovation adoption curve is that you know, then people would follow people that would go in the, the, the end they would never do change anything uh, no. but maybe they are not our focus, right? So if we focus on the, the middle and they change, then it would be, uh, I, know, I think it would be uh, successful. There's a question there. So, so uh, the question is, what is the measure of success? And if we are getting, gathering data. So great question. Uh, hopefully the measure of success of any Agile transformation, it's not velocity or story point or anything related to that. So that's, that, that is clear. It's really more on, is it the customer getting the value that uh, it, it needs? And... Uh, from my case, so this is the last question, I'm out of time. Uh, 
from, from our case, with these baseline assessments that we are doing, we are gathering the same responses for 100 teams. So we are getting there. And we will understand uh, from, from these assessments that we are doing what areas from these things we are having problem as our organization. Right, so another example, uh, is it training that it's needed, right? So they don't understand what value is, right? So, and then this is kind of the way that we are looking at metrics, nothing like, I know, or, or velocity or anything like that. So we are gonna have these assessments, understand where in the organization we have maybe possibilities for improvement. Let's say a lot of teams don't understand if they deliver value or not. That would be an opportunity for us to, okay, so let's investigate further. Let's see what we can do to improve so that teams understand you know, how to deliver value or if they deliver value or something like that. Does it help answering? All right, cool. Uh, we are out of time, so thank you very much for your time. And uh, if you want, <laughs> we'll talk tomorrow. Thank you.